Hi, everybody. Um, like, uh, yeah, like, everybody say hi to my mom. Like, that's, that's <laughs> how we, I think that's how we are obligated to open the show. Is everybody say hi to Mary Mozlowski, uh, tuned in from Fort Collins. Um, let us know when you can see us. Takes a lag minute. Uh, we don't want to start until uh, if we're going to get everybody cut off. So please let us know. Just put it in the chat that you can see us. Um, hi, Goshi. Very glad uh, you are here. We've got a bunch of cool people. Um, here, people, look at them popping in. Uh, yeah, just follow Goshi's lead. Start introducing yourselves. Yeah, right on. Hi, Gil. Um, uh, Mark Copeland's here from Concord. Deja from QC. What's up, Deja? Nice. Um, all right. That means we're, we're definitely on. Um, uh, oh, right on. Oh, Kazuo is, is, uh, is up early uh, coming, in from, from, coming in from uh, Japan. That's pretty great. Um, hey, Jaden. Um, Jaden Cumberford, one of the best music managers down under. Um, also up early or late, depending on uh, how you look at it. We'll see. Um, okay, we're very clearly live. People can see us. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, very happy to see you. Um, we are thrilled to be back. Um, my hope is that Emily Coleman, our illustrious former host of this program, the Techstars Music Tech Town Hall, is in the audience. If she is, say hello, Emily. Um, we will make sure you get a shout out. Um, Alex and I are going are, are gonna to stumble our way into it uh, without you this time. So let's see if we can see if we can make it. Um, so by way of intro, everybody say hello to Alex. Uh, he's right here. Uh, say hello. Alex, why don't you take us through how this is all going to work? Yeah, pretty simple today, everybody. Um, so Crowdcast functionality uh, is uh, delightfully simple. Uh, so it's all here inside the browser. Um, we really want this to be as interactive as possible. So we do have a deck that we're going through today. But what makes this uh, interactive and interesting and helps you get lots of value out of it is if you ask questions uh, and if you have a conversation inside the comments section. So just kind of going around the horn here, down at the bottom, there's an ask a question button. So pose any questions that you have either about the team over here at Techstars Music, about how we're going to run this program, about what kind of companies we're looking for. We're going to try to preemptively answer a lot of those questions as we go through our presentation. But as you have them, just pop them in there. Um, and if there's another question that's there that that you would also like to see answered, go ahead and upvote that question because that helps me at the end of the broadcast. I can sort of surface the ones that have been the most voted on um, and pop those over to Bob so that we can get them answered. Um, so walking counterclockwise, um, comment, start chatting. Everyone's already saying hi, so clearly we understand how that one works. Um, share up in the upper right-hand corner. Invite some other people to come in here. Um, get your co-founders in here. Get your colleagues in here. Um, we'd love to open up this conversation as big as we can. And then if you are uh, watching this as a recording, um, up in the upper left-hand corner, that's where you'll see it. Uh, and you're free to share this recording as well uh, if you know of somebody who might be interested in, in what we're up to over here. Fantastic. Thank you, Alex. Um, yeah. One other thing I would point out for folks in the chat, uh, introduce yourself, your company. If you want to put LinkedIn URLs in there, that's been uh, successful for people in the past. They've connected. Um, we have a lot of, of members and uh, independent mentors and even a couple of investors probably lurking, hiding, um, not letting us know that they're there, but they're probably there. Um, by all means, please make sure you introduce yourselves and feel free to take those conversations outside of the town hall uh, and build your networks that way. Like we're trying to do this in a transparent way so people can can build their networks. Um, okay, should we should we just, just, just dive in here? Yeah, there, yeah. And, and there's already a poll question there. So if you just wanna let us know and if you wanna get a sense of who else is in the room, go ahead and uh, check it out. All right. Okay, so here's going to be our agenda. Uh, some basic intros. I'm Bob. That's Alex. Um, Alex is going to tell us a little couple. We're going to give Alex 30 seconds to a minute to tell about where he came from oh, and how cool. he got here and, and how he helps us run the program. And then I'm going to do sort of 10 minutes on updates on the program. We're going to do a little bit of financial updates, surface level, talk a little bit about the way the program schedule will adapt to our post-pandemic we hope it's a post-pandemic world, like how we're dealing with sort of the, the hybrid functions of life at this moment. Um, and then sometime during that process, while I'm giving my spiel and walking through all those slides, uh, Alex is going to pluck uh, Ian um, Simon from Strange Loop and David McKay from Seated Up Out of the Crowd. They're probably lurking in the back. Oh, there's Emily. There's hey, Emily. Emily. Yes. Um, we're, we, we miss you, Em. Hope, hope things, Emily works at Facebook now. We're, we're very proud of her. She's uh, our former program manager um, and the original creator of the Music Tech Town Hall that we are now stealing her, her former. <laughs> uh, we miss you. I'm hoping I think everything is great. Um, and then we'll, so we'll have Ian and David come on. We'll talk through the poll a little bit. I'll ask those guys some questions. And then 
uh, they'll give us some answers and we'll talk a little bit about their companies and their experiences in the program. And then we'll do some Q and A and we'll be, we'll get you, uh, everybody out of here, um, back to your days around two o'clock. Sound good? Let's do it. Okay. So if you are brand new to Techstars Music, don't know how the program works, um, are curious about how it functions, what we do, how we operate, this slide is for you. So every year we find 10 startups around the world solving big, hairy, global problems for music. They're not necessarily music companies. They are companies solving problems for music. We'll talk a little bit more about that in our investment thesis um, in a couple of slides. But we find 10 of those companies. We've been doing this every year since 2017. And we will invest $120,000 into each of them. So every year we're deploying $1.2 million into, into startups growing the music business. We then expose those companies to 300 plus mentors from music, tech, live events, the venture ecosystem, finance, trying to help you get your, your company strategically aligned, your team built, your fundraising pitch um, succinct and ready to go. And then we help you exit out into the venture ecosystem. Um, the, at this moment, everybody would then ask, well, how does that work? Give us some, give us some results and some, and some data points on how that works. Um, to date, our classes from 2017 to 2021 have gone on to raise uh, more than $155 million in post-program capital. Um, we have also had five exits. Um, you'll actually hear from David McKay today uh, about a little bit about that. Um, he's going to come on and talk about that. Um, Alex, if you wouldn't mind. Flip oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, you can see I'm, my, my future is not um, to be, to be a talk show host. We had to throw that one in there last second. <laughs> We, we are thrilled to announce this, though. I don't know if Rob or Damien from Hi-Fi are in the, in the chat um, or John uh, or Thomas from the Music Fund. Um, these guys teamed up. It, got, it was announced uh, publicly last week that Hi-Fi has acquired the Music Fund. Um, we are very excited about that. It takes the Music Fund's sort of uh, automated uh, uh, advance and, and loan uh, capital program you know, to all of the artists using the Hi-Fi platform for managing their finances and, and making sense of their income. Um, great stuff, good partnership, smart founders joining other smart founders, uh, a really good thing for music. So we're thrilled to, to have that come out, um, came out publicly last week. We just want to give a little, a little shot to it. So six uh, of the 50 companies that we have invested in have now gone on to be uh, acquired by another entity. Um, okay, so where does our capital come from? How does this work? Where does the money come from? How do we get, why do we get to do this? How does it happen? Um, we get to do it because... Uh, we have an incredible relationship with our member companies. A lot of our uh, and a lot of our day-to-day -day member uh, company reps are in the chat. They're available. Um, you'll see them pop up. Um, I know I saw the Peloton team going by. I saw uh, Samira from BSC in the chat already. Um, there, there's a bunch of us. I'm at Megan from Concord. So these companies um, provide capital to us so that we can then provide capital uh, to startups. Um, important to like mention them, right? Um, we saw Deja in from Quality Control uh, in Atlanta, right? Most of most of hip hop culture these days flows through QC. We're thrilled to have them there. Um, I haven't seen anybody from Hive yet, although it is it is pretty early in the morning in Seoul, right? So there, there might be somebody lurking uh, uh, from our friends at Hive. Um, there's Alex Bear from Peloton right there on Q. Nice work. Um, uh, Sony team will pop in and say hello. Uh, Court Taylor. Yep, who who uh, manages Khalid and runs uh, Keep Cool Records. Um, Courtney will be here. Uh, look at that. There's Tandy and and Mark. Um, uh, above that, uh, new on this list that you might not recognize is the Monarch Music Group up here in the top. Um, Alex and I went through and did a bunch of branding scrubbing. That's our uh, our existing member E1. Uh, E1, if you if you might remember, joined the program, got immediately acquired by Hasbro. Uh, did a year inside of as a division of Hasbro, and then the music division of E1 uh, split out and sold uh, to Blackstone, where they join uh, Song Trader and CSAC as part of the Blackstone music portfolio. They have rebranded uh, into Monarch Music Group uh, just last week, and now you can see there's the new Monarch uh, music logo. Um, we're thrilled to have uh, an independent, another independent music company in the membership, and we think there's going to be really cool stuff coming. Um, with Chris Taylor and team there uh, and Bill Wilson this year. Thrilled to have you guys uh, as Monarch Music Group. So that's the list. Um, I haven't seen anybody from Amazon yet, though I'm sure they're in there somewhere. Uh, I can't imagine that Matt or Jen or Alex or Rishi or or, um, or Sean are out there somewhere lurking around. Uh, we'll see them pop up 
um, as we go. So thank you to our member companies, right? They supply the capital that runs the program. What they also do though, are make direct investments into portfolio companies. Um, you'll hear a little bit about uh, more about that from Ian Simon um, as we add him to the, uh, to the call. Um, so more than $8 million of that $155 million in, pro in post program funding has come from our member companies directly into the startups. That doesn't flow through Techstars. We just count it as additional investment. Um, but you can see that they are more than just sort of sponsors of the program. They help us run it. We diligence companies together. They do pilots. They make direct investments. Um, you know, almost a full 6% of follow on capital comes from our, from our members. Oh, there's Jack Rutledge lurking in. There's an Amazon. There's an Amazon music guy. What's up, Jack? Um, also worth calling out here. I just, I just mentioned him. So we'll hit these very quickly. Um, these are members who are new to the program, uh, in the last year, right? So, uh, right hand music, Courtney Stewart and right hand music group joined us last year. Um, quality control, uh, Deja's in the chat, right? These guys control, uh, hip hop and most of Atlanta. Um, we're thrilled to have them. And then Hod from Seoul, right? The, the music behemoth, uh, behind our friends at BTS, um, diverse viewpoints, diverse opinions, diverse strategies, all with a slightly different bent on growing the global music business. Um, in addition to our member companies, follow on capital and investment into uh, the Techstars music portfolio also comes from these some of these fine investors. This is by no means an exhaustive list. Um, we put this slide together to give you an example uh, so you can see sort of the kind of investors um, who are active in our portfolio companies. Uh, funds like True Ventures, the Alexa Fund, Bolt Capital, uh, Kima Ventures, um, Coastla Ventures, Two Sigma, Waverly, um, the Venture Reality Fund. We have a couple positions with those guys, Foundry Group in Boulder. So grade A capital uh, from around the world into our portfolio companies after our program. Okay, so that's by way of intro. How do we operate and a little bit of financial updates. Um, by all means, if you have specific questions about that, please ask the question, upvote them. We can dig in on some of that if those are important questions from folks. Um, now let's talk about 2022. So uh, last year, uh, the question was, how is Techstars Music going to operate when we are all stuck in Zoom jail um, and, and, and working in our living rooms? Um, and the answer was entirely virtually. This year, the answer is slightly different, although we are not entirely back uh, to where we would like to be all the way in person and traveling around to see everybody. So here's how this will work. Through the end of this year, still entirely virtually. Um, we have sort of one exception to that, um, but that's going to be internal members only part of the program where a bunch of us will get together uh, and in our final sort of screening event to make final um, investment decisions. We will have the membership committee all together for a member meeting here in Los Angeles. But if you are a founder applying to the program, if you're curious about, do you need to come meet us in person? Do you need to get on a plane to LA to meet us? Are we gonna to be touring around Europe like we would normally do in a non-COVID year or pre-pandemic? The answer to that is no, no travel required. Um, and But we will be making our same capital investments, right? So we're still investing our same 120K in every company. We're still giving the same access to all of the mentors and the Techstars network and our perks package and the, and the global music business. Um, but between now and, and the point where we make our investment decisions, everything will run virtually from a tech stars to founders perspective. That will change in the spring. So this year, our program starts a little earlier than it has in the past. We've normally started sort of in the middle of February. Um, this year, we are tying the start of our program to Grammys. And we think that there's going to be a very vibrant and active Grammy week here in Los Angeles. What's up, Chris Frankenberg? There's our, there's a, there's a guy from Sony Music we were, we were looking to shout out earlier. Um, and so we, we expect that the global music business will descend on LA for, the, for Grammy week uh, again this year. And so our plan is to run what we, what we are calling inside of Techstars a hybrid program. Um, there's Rob Bonstein from Hi-Fi. Rob, I hope you're here for your shout out. Um, uh, we're very glad to to uh, to have uh, sold a company to you guys and, and help the ecosystem. Um, so let me go back to this. So starting January 24th, right, which is the beginning of Grammy week, uh, we will have the program in person in LA for seven to 10 days. Um, at that point, the program will revert back to virtual. So founders don't need to think about relocating to LA for the program. They just need to make a business trip here. Um, Alex and I have been doing some spreadsheet juggling and some... Uh, moving out of our old office and moving things around and, and, and like counting our pennies, we will subsidize a bunch of the expenses that founders will incur to come to LA, New York, 
Atlanta, and then back to LA during the program. So in a very different way than we have operated uh, Techstars Music um, in the past, we're going to go visit our member companies in various cities. So the way that this will look roughly is program begins, everybody comes to LA for a week, we get on, we onboard everybody, we talk about it, we meet each other, we get a collection of, of mentors and founders together. Then founders all go home to their respective cities, which could be Europe, could be Asia, could be other cities in the US. We work two weeks remotely, still active in the program. Then we meet up in New York and we spend a week in New York meeting member companies, again, independent mentors and investors, having conversations there, getting to know each other, working on, on developing your businesses, then back home for two more weeks, and then to Atlanta, where we will visit our friends at QC and, and Right Hand and uh, maybe some other Techstars folks and investors in the Atlanta ecosystem, because that city is super important to music, especially here in the US. Then back for two more weeks at home remotely, and then finishing the program here in LA. Our plan, that's right, Jared, we're coming to you. Um, <laughs> I say hi, Jared Hines uh, from Music Tech Works, an alum of the, just last year's program. Um, so uh, the, the biggest thing that we would like to return to the program is our in-person demo day in Los Angeles. Um, we haven't been able to do that for two years. We are uncertain if we will be able to do that this spring, although we are optimistic that by April, we think we could be able to have people in a room on an invite only basis and get people together. Um, uh, if we can't, we'll deal and we'll continue to do uh, our online uh, virtual demo days like we did this spring with uh, Rolling Stone and Twitch. Um, but our plan is to do both of those things. So the idea is there is a investors, executives, sort of invite only showcasing of the startups and, and in-person networking in Los Angeles, followed by one or two days later, an open to the public online event like we did at Twitch um, uh, this spring. We will do both things because lots of value for startups in, in both cases. So any questions about that, please submit them. You're also welcome to send them to us via email. Um, uh, I am Bob Maz at techstars.com. That's, it's all published on uh, techstarsmusic.com, our website. You can see the link there. Those are the practical big updates for the way the program will operate this year. Um, our, our belief on, in doing this, our hypothesis here, is that we'll get the best of both worlds, right? We, we love the equity and the, and the lack of bias in making selections remotely. Um, I was worried that making investments in companies without having met people in person was going to be a problem. And what I realized actually was um, that it was more equitable, um, more had less bias in it. It was more accessible to people around the world. It, and, it, and it was a lot easier for founders to know where they stood if everything was the same. And we and we end up with, as investors with symmetrical information. On the flip side, not being able to put everybody together and build in-person relationships eliminates kind of the, some of the serendipity of a Techstars Accelerator program where people help each other solve problems in ways they didn't expect and really long-term uh, relationships are built, um, including with acquirers uh, via mentorship uh, or relationships, which I think maybe we can get David McKay to talk about um, when he's on here in a second. So um, we're trying to get the best of both worlds in a, in a post-pandemic uh, operating scheme. So that's where we are with that. Um, also important to, to address here is who should be applying to the program. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, text messages here from members. Keep it in the chat. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> gonna, I'm on my freaking flyer plan uh, texting me on, on the side. Uh, that's pretty funny. Um, okay. So let's talk about who should apply for tech startup music. Um, the first piece I touched on a minute ago, which is startups solving problems for music. Um, we want these companies to be global. We want them to be scalable and we assume they're going to be, uh, heavily tech driven. Right? We don't make it an absolute rule because rules are made to be broken, um, but we are investors in software companies that scale and can get venture size returns. Um, it is important for me to say this, that we are not necessarily interested in music startups. Just because your company is, is music related does not mean we are going to be interested in it. We are interested in, in the problem you can solve and how the global music business will benefit if you succeed. That's the way we think about it. So we, we are invested in in-person live event security companies. We are invested in virtual artists. We are invested in a Roblox game that, that kids perform music while they play it. We are invested in uh, ticketing companies. We are invested in back office accounting uh, processing companies, right? We are invested in AI voice generation companies to provide the ability to give acting control to act to, to virtual characters or game developers or people making animated content, right? So. 
these are these are companies that are under no circumstance would be classified as music companies in any sort of categorical listing about the way they operate. And yet they are alumni of Techstars Music because they, they meet sort of this criteria, which is when as they succeed, the global music business grows and benefits, creates new revenue streams or solves a real inefficiency problem in the business. So that's worth noting. The other thing worth talking about in terms of who should apply for Techstars Music is a quick update on our DEI commitments. So this time last year, the whole planet, and I'm and, I, and particularly in the U.S., but really the whole planet, was really public and forward thinking about how we are going to create a more equitable, a more just, and uh, and a more open um, and fair venture ecosystem. Um, we made a commitment last year that half of the slots in our program, right, five of the ten companies. Would, that, that we would invest in each year would have CEOs from what we would call diverse backgrounds inside of Techstars. And what that means practically is that these companies will have CEOs who are people of color, who are from, or from marginalized communities, or are from the LGBTQ, LGBTQ, LGBTQ plus, geez, you got it. I got it. LGBTQ, LGBTQ um, plus communities, uh, um, women, um, military veterans, right? These are, are people with disabilities, right? So the we are intentionally, right, betting half of our fund on the on founders from these categories because we know that those founders, when when they are invested in and developed, actually provide better returns and better success profile than just anybody else off the street. We also know that it's that black culture and gay culture drive music culture, and music culture drives global culture. And so if we are not invested in these and, and aligned with and deploying capital into these communities, frankly, we are just not doing our job correctly. Um, and so I'm, it's, I'm, I want to make sure that I remind everybody that while the fashion and the, the press releases around this kind of commitment have sort of, I wouldn't say they've gone away, and I think people are still genuinely uh, committed to it and care about it a lot, but I feel like... Um, it's a good moment to remind you that we're still going to keep doing this and we're still here. And this remains a commitment of our program going forward. Yes, because it's on thesis and yes, because it is the, the right thing to do. Um, and so it's also important in this moment to call out that uh, founders and companies that are accepted into our program um, as part of this commitment are also eligible for 30 K additional, like no diligence matching uh, investments from both Concord and the Warner music group. So um, Concord has their impact initi uh, in investing initiative, which is um, run by Tina, who I think is in the chat, um, staying up late. timing was perfect. She just said hi, yeah. There you go, perfect. So <laughs> Tina's, Tina's in there, um, live from Berlin. Uh, Tina runs that, um, and that's the Concord Impact Investing. Uh, they've got a $10 million fund. They're deploying capital out of that into companies. Um, and then the Warner Music Group, um, I, haven't, I don't know if Warner Friends are on, if Joe or... Um, uh, or Alex, or John, or uh, uh, or Alex, other Alex, two Alexes. Um, everybody's named Alex. Everybody's exactly. named Alex. Everybody. Everybody. Um, I don't know if they're on, but if they are, say hello. The goal there is that um, out of the Warner Boost Fund, there will also be 30k matching investments. So, if you if you're a founder of color, if you if you are a gay founder, a person with disabilities, someone coming from um, a, a marginalized community, or or you are a military veteran, um, you could receive up to 180k in investment. Uh, through Techstars Music rather than just our standard 120K, right? So adding, there's John, there's John Molina right there. What's up, John? Um, and Joe B too, perfect timing, gents. Um, <laughs> glad you're here. And and to both Concord and Warners, thank you so much for backing our our, our commitment here, right? It, it is, it goes without, it, it gets under uh, under uh, credited or understated that um, this make this, we're all trying to do the right thing here, but we also have thesis, but it would it means a lot more when our member companies are putting additional capital where to back up their beliefs. So anyway, thank you. Important to note. Um, I should have brought myself a glass of water. This is a lot. <laughs> you can take a quick break because we're back to the agenda right now. Well, um, the Ian, agenda. Tell us Ian, we are. Ian, I'm going to, I'm going to pluck you, uh, uh, Ian from strange loop, uh, just so you know, you're about to be invited on screen. So just make sure you accept that invitation. Because next up, we want to talk to some alums. Uh, we want to make sure that we get some updates. Uh, and we want to make sure that any of the founders that are in the audience uh, right now um, that might have questions about sort of what this feels like from a founder perspective, get a chance to ask those. Oh, look at him. There he is. What's up, Ian? 
Bring, bring How's it David, going, y'all? Bring David at the same time. And we'll, you want me to bring David up here too? All right, cool. cool, cool. Get, get in there now that we have them both, uh, and, and they can uh, they can disagree with me publicly. <laughs> it sucks <laughs> all of a sudden. Okay, it's, it's terrible. It's also, <laughs> also, don't good, look at my LinkedIn <laughs> posts. <laughs> Also, a good moment to remind people uh, if you came in and joined earlier and missed the, missed the intro, there is an ask a question function. We will do QA uh, at the end. Um, please put your questions uh, into there. If, if, if members or mentors can answer your questions directly in the chat, they're welcome to do that too. Please do that. Um, what's up, David? Welcome. Um, but we'll definitely cover those questions sort of at the end. Upvote them if you like them. Alex will uh, we'll run through and make sure we get them covered. Hi, gents. Oh wait a minute! Did we uh, did we just lose David? No, I'm here. I was just uh, honoring my place online. Uh, no, stay. We'll, we'll do we'll do this together. Um, cool. First, uh, everybody say hi to Ian. So, Ian, uh, introduce yourself. Say hello. You're from Strange Loop Studios. Hey, y'all. I am indeed. Uh, can you guys hear me? Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So happy to be here. Uh, any opportunity to to support the tech stars fam as they have done me. Um, I'm Ian, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Strange Loop Studios. Uh, before tech stars, we were mostly designing uh, 3D visuals for, for all sorts of applications and music, mostly concert visuals, touring with artists, creating the, the visuals on the screens behind them, but also music videos and doing narrative work with tech stars and uh, with, uh, with musicians. And we joined tech stars to make move into um, more scalable original content specifically building the future of virtual beings in music so we were um we were creating virtual characters at the time uh, they were also entering the uh -oh, we got a little bit of a connectivity problem there Ian. are you all right here you all am i breaking up yeah a little bit a little bit, but I think you're maybe you're back now. We'll see if we can make it. See if we can make it work. Um, so, Alex, if you wouldn't mind, let's put this next slide up. So, if if it broke up for everybody else, Ian was talking about the reason we made our investment into. Oh, there he went. Um, the reason we made our investment into Strange was they're going to, as designers of tour production and creating the spectacle uh, behind some of your favorite artists like The Weeknd and Kendrick Lamar and Bonobos and and Billie Eilish and others. Um, they thought they could actually create some of the artists and create amazing shows that people would want to buy tickets to. So one of their first characters uh, that we have up here um, is LV4. This is a, a quick screen grab of uh, LV's TikTok presence. Um, LV's up to 121,000 followers uh, on TikTok. And if you wouldn't mind advance it one more, uh, Alex. Um, and we'll hopefully we'll get Ian back. He'll tell us about this. This little video you are seeing here is LV opening for Zed uh, just this past weekend. This is this is video from the shrine of a projected robot character. Um, play that again, Alex. Let's see how. Let's see that again. This is the Shrine Auditorium here in LA. This is Zed Zed production, uh, and this is LV in front of the crowd. Yes, Ian. This That's is exactly what it is. Yeah, it was actually Zed's dead. Um, which is which is why they're playing the Shrine and not uh, SoFi Stadium, but but gotcha. still about about thirty eight hundred people there. Um, and uh, yeah, I broke up for a bit there, but Bob, I trust you've heard the the pitch enough to have done it justice. So, I did. Uh, I okay. did yeah, no problem. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, this was actually just a conventional two D LED wall. Uh, Bob's one of the few who have seen some of the tech we're rolling out, where you actually wear three D glasses, and the LED wall is is a bespoke creation where it looks like a holographic presentation of the character. But this was a very, very fun proof of concept where we snuck our character in between two real world acts, the uh, the opener for Zedstead and Zedstead themselves. So we had that great moment when the lights went down, LV rose out of the floor seemingly, and there was that suspended belief of whether people knew they were looking at a, at a real artist or, um, or virtual character. Once it became clear he was eight feet in size, I think most people knew that they were looking at a CGI character. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it was, it was incredibly fun this past weekend. And uh, yeah, some more fun stuff with Zed's dead and their record label in the works for, for the future. I love it. Sorry for mixing, mixing it up. You can tell I'm a very deep both Zed and Zed's dead fan. My apologies. I won't tell them. Yeah, don't, nobody, don't tell anybody. Um, all right, McKay, now you're up. Uh, and by a little way of intro, uh, you are founder and CEO of a company called Seated, 
um, give us a little bit of uh, about Seated. And then uh, my next slide here is, uh, and I already teased sort of the SoFar acquisition. Um, you're now part of SoFar Sounds. Give us a little way of intro, um, what you guys do and who you are and how you got there. Yeah, that's right. I'm David McKay. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Seated. Uh, my background's been in music. I um, started my career at Atlantic Records. I was there for many years in the digital department and then left to join a company called Applause that we were later rebranded to a company called Lane One and sold it to Ticketmaster in 2016. And at that point I left and started Seated because I saw a big opportunity to partner directly with artists on the ticketing side. I thought that the ticketing world was really built for venues and event promoters and no one was really putting a focus on the most important part of that equation, which is the artist. And uh, so for over the past almost five years now, we've, uh, we're working with over a thousand different artists in a bunch of different capacities, but uh, primarily with a focus on helping artists capture data of their ticket buyers around their live events. Uh, we have a bunch of tools that help artists do that. Fantastic. And, uh, and give people uh, 30 seconds on the acquisition and where you are now inside of so far. Yeah, so Seated's still running as an independent company. We were acquired and the deal closed in February of this year. Um, but the idea is really to continue running Seated as an independent company while providing a lot of the services to so far as a network of 40,000 independent foundational growing developing artists. Um, so, you know, whereas so far sounds if, you know, the, the, if you're not familiar with them as a company, um, so far produces events in really intimate, unique spaces. So they'll take a place like a coffee shop or a hotel rooftop or someone's backyard and turn it into a concert venue for a night. And they, it, it sounds like a small quirky thing, but they do that 10,000 times a year in 450 cities around the world. Um, so they're operating these small intimate concerts at a massive scale. And there's a ton of artists that have used so far as a developing platform for them as they grow in their careers. So uh, for instance, artists like Leon Bridges and Hosier and Dawes and Lucius um, and, and a ton of amazing other examples uh, use so far to develop their live careers early on playing in these unique spaces before they could ticket hard ticketed shows. Um, even Billie Eilish, her first ever live performance was at a SoFar Sound show in LA. Um, and obviously now she's playing stadium. So there's um, the idea of the acquisition was um, SoFar's great at the developing artists and giving them the platform to begin their touring career and Seated handles everything after that. And um, we wanted to really bring a software mindset to a company that's been really like logistics and operational focused. Fantastic. Yeah, look, it's I think the so far opportunity is unbounded and really fascinating. And a, and a, and as it started, like secretly found a hole in the live entertainment business that they could really fill and, and make huge. I think I think it's an awesome uh, setup. So thank you for thank you both for the by way of intro. Um, now we have sort of a, a very brief uh, segue here. Alex is going to flip this. We're going to see exactly who's on the call here on the poll. So we just met. Uh, David and Ian, and now we're going to uh, take a look at the poll. Um, if you have not, uh, if you see it at the bottom of the screen, just over here, um, pop that up. Let us know who you are. If you are a startup founder, if you are an investor, if you are uh, a TechStars Music mentor or member, just by way of like a quick click on the votes, um, let us know who you are and and what kind of audience we have. And then we're going to jump into. I have I have sort of three basic questions for both Ian and David. They can answer them both. And we can talk about them. They'll give us sort of quick kick answers, and then we'll go to your to your questions. Yeah, it's starting to flow in a little bit. It looks like half the folks are startup founders, uh, and then we've got quite a few. Uh, the rest of it's mostly music members and mentors, um, which is kind of a great half half mix. And a few people brave enough to click that they were investors. Um, yeah, they're, they're always in there. They're always <laughs> out there, just lurking. They're always lurking. <laughs> And only one robot DJ. Uh, so, if so LV, there you go. I mean, I don't know. Only L LV maybe is the only person who tuned in uh, to the chat. Could make LV appear on his own, huh? Listen, he's shy. He's <laughs> a reclusive musician. Just an eight-foot-tall reclusive robot. Yeah, yeah. he hides <laughs> in the metaverse. That's right. 
Um, all right, so let's do these. Let's hit these questions. Are you ready? Um, we'll go. We'll go. David, Ian, Ian, David. Right. We're gonna bring them back and forth. Um, super short and sweet. Uh, number one, what should founders do to get the most out of TechStars? Uh, utilize the mentor pool and come in with an attitude um, w without any ego. Um, you know, I had worked for a decade in the music industry prior to joining TechStars. And I was looking at the list of mentors and I was like, you know, these are people that I know are one degree removed from, or I worked with in the past. And um, I, if you come in with an open mind, uh, understanding everybody's got a unique perspective and unique opinion, um, you can, you'll get a lot of different opinions, but you'll use uh, your own intuition to, to take all that information and, and make the best decisions using that. So um, the mentor pool was really helpful, even if you, don't think you need it. Yeah, or even if you already know them, right? They're, they're super smart people who have just volunteered to work on your company. Like, let them do it. Absolutely. I dig it. Ian, what would you say? Yeah, I totally agree. I think I think the humility aspect of going to the mentor pool too is huge. And especially not necessarily being prescriptive about which mentors you suspect will provide the most value. There were so many outside of like particular sector or experience that we were in, like on the operational side, on the human capital side, that particularly as a new, someone new to a tech startup who'd been you know, running a, a creative agency with a, you know, no real semblance of a product model, those ended up being the mentors that I had no familiarity with um, beforehand that I probably ended up talking to and calling the most. And, um, and also I think it took me a, a sec to get over asking people like, we're clearly willing to to help, like you're saying, Bob. To like, there are a lot of people who are happy to do some fun homework on your behalf, and uh, and definitely don't miss out on that. It's it's you know, worth its weight in gold when you're a startup founder with only a limited amount of bandwidth. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one too. Like the the amount that like TechStars wouldn't work without our mentors, right? If you talk about TechStars exists on the works on the principle of give first. Those 300 plus independent mentors. And executives, in fact, like they, we don't pay them. They volunteer. They want to see cool stuff and meet cool people and learn and see what's happening in the ecosystem. And sometimes they become employees of startups. Sometimes they become acquirers. I mean, we can tell that story in a minute, David. Um, sometimes they become investors. Sometimes they do something in your business that changes it materially forever, right? Like the the things that they could, the roles they could play are very, very diverse. Um, it, that's I has that's great advice from both of you. Um, Okay, question two. Uh, now we'll go Ian, uh, David. Um, predict the future. Uh, what will live music and events look like in two to three years? What do you see coming? Where do you, what is the big change you foresee? Um, how many robot DJs are we gonna are we gonna be buying tickets to see? Where are we get where are we headed here? Yeah, I mean, for me, this feels like it's being served up for me to say that half the musicians you're gonna see are gonna be virtual artists. But that's actually uh, that's that's not the extent. I think. The, the bigger sort of more 30,000 foot view that I anticipate is some unification between all of the work we've seen happening in the virtual concert space and the IRL concert space, which have so far felt pretty bifurcated and like they're not talking to one another in a particularly creative way or one that adds value to the, like, the user on either side. And mm -hmm. I think it's only a matter of time in the next few years before we see some really like intentional unification between people who are in the room at concerts and people who are like geographically restricted from from being at that concert and having the experience feed on one another rather than being siloed from one another um and as someone you know with experience in both areas of those realms i feel like we haven't totally seen that yet and they've been on parallel paths rather than intertwined with one another so totally um, agree. that's one area we're super excited to see is metaverse plus plus irl yeah, shout, shout out to Alex uh, Kane at Volta, who this last weekend uh, had wrapped, like did a show uh, with Anjuna Deep at the Brooklyn Mirage, where their visuals were mapped to the interior of the venue, and you could also participate in the chat on Twitch, and that would change the, the visuals in the venue, right? Um, beginning the very, very baby steps of, of IRL and the virtual world joining joining forces. Uh, I'm with you. Um, more investments from us on that on that front to come, I assume. Uh, David, you're, you're coming from the ticketing and the artist services perspective. Uh, how do you, how do you answer? Yeah, I don't know if this is too optimistic, but like if we're 
if we're lucky, the, the live events world will look very similar to what it did two to three years ago. Um, <laughs> I think we're in this weird in between period that is um, in part temporary. Um, we're, we're very close to the ground. A crypto wallet to get into every show. Is that? <laughs> right. right. Um, you know, we're very close to the ground as far as, um, you know, on the ticketing side of stuff with like, refunds and different policies. And we're living in this weird, weird world right now where there's like three buckets of people. There's the people that bought tickets uh, but no longer want to go because they're like anti-mask, anti-vax. And then there's the other end of the spectrum where they bought tickets, but they no longer want to go because they're too concerned that the anti-vax or the the mask of vax policies like aren't going to be enough to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. And like the only people that are attending shows are the people that are in the middle and we're dealing with customer support and refunds on the either side. And I think hopefully that all levels itself out. And, you know, I think um, people are willing to go back to shows. And I, I certainly agree that there are some learnings from here where or from the past 18 months where virtual events um, are, are going to start to infiltrate uh, and not be a replacement for uh, in real life events, but be more uh, complimentary. Um, but yeah, like we're, I, I think the world we live in uh, right now is very different than the world we're going to be living in. And hopefully two to three years from now, it looks like two to three years ago, once you're in the venue. You're you're still you're still long. Human experience can't be replicated. It's the it is the scarce good. It's ma it is the magical thing we've all cared about since we were around the campfire banging bones on logs, right? Like hundred percent. I mean, like okay. the, our aggressive approach was we stopped doing live streams. Like during the during the um, the eighteen months where of the pandemic, like we ticketed one hundred fifty or two hundred different paid live streams. We built live streaming software and we supported artists around that, and then. Very quickly, like artists stopped focusing on that and they wanted to focus on the return to live. So, you know, we went back to our business and we're like, let's let all these other new players in the space focus on live streams. I'm not anti live stream, just like I'm bullish on the fact that artists are still going to need tools for their in real life events. People are still going to want to buy tickets to shows. They're still going to want to know who their customers are. Um, and we're going to be the best at that and let everybody else deal with the, the live streaming side of stuff. I love it. I love it. Um, and as, a, as an investor, I like having be able to do uh, <laughs> to both of these positions. <laughs> I, like, I like to have portfolio companies in, in both directions. I'm with you. All right. Uh, thank you. Question number three, a um, little more insightful, a little more personal um, in this case. David, you can go first. Um, personal advice to founders, right? What, what's the biggest lesson you've learned that while running your company to this point that you would if you could implant in someone earlier, save them time, save them headache, save them pain and suffering. What's the biggest lesson you've learned that would change your behavior if, if you could go back? Um, you know, for us, I mean, this is like the common thing, which is like learning from your mistakes fast and, and adapting. And um, if I could go back, it, if I could go back, I have a lot of different learnings because I think of where I ended up, but um, if I could go back and at the start of the pandemic, instead of getting distracted by short-term opportunities and the short-term businesses coming our way, being able to say no to things, even when they were big opportunities, if they didn't align with the long-term mission, I wish I was better at that because there were constant opportunities where it's like, our, like, for instance, our mission is to help empower artists to capture more data. Well, a big concert promoter comes to us and is like, we want to use Seated and you're going to generate, you know, X thousands of dollars in revenue. And for us, we're like, we need that money. It's worth it. Let's, let's, it doesn't align with our mission. It's just a short-term revenue. Let's go after that. And if you keep bouncing back and forth between these short-term opportunities, you're distracted and you, um, you don't get to the end result. And I think we took too many short-term revenue opportunities, and I would be better about saying no um, in the future. But I know that's kind of vague. No, that's a, it's a good one though. And and Ian, I did not tell David to say that um, for, uh, for your on your for just on your behalf. Like it's not a he's not a plan. Can't hear David, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Oh man. Uh, 
He did, he, he, his advice was. I can't. I'm only getting audio from the two of y'all. I think it's probably my connection. Okay. All right. So his advice was, it's, uh, it's. It we should be better at saying uh, no to short-term revenue and things that are good but are not in service of the longer-term biggest vision, right? Um, and I was I was making jokes. You and I just had that phone call like two days ago, but I didn't I didn't plan him to say yeah, that. Yeah. Are you texting him? Yeah, yeah. You're texting him <laughs> under the table to make sure he's got the party line. Um, I mean, I I can 100% agree with that statement though, right? Like I think the the um, Part of the upshot of that combo on our side was was really sifting out the what what the long term value of, of some of those short term projects is, and the answer usually isn't revenue, right? It's it's like in our case, it's having our relationships with artists provides a um, distribution advantage and like presence in the in the industry was super useful to us, way far and above you know the the amount of runway we get from those projects. Um, so we we'll definitely definitely agree there. All right. I, I think that's I know it's super helpful and and look I also understand that it's probably you know mind melting for some of the founders on here which are like wait you're saying no to customers giving you money and that and the the reality is is like it's easy to say no to opportunities that are bad or deals that are bad or that, that it's very very hard to evaluate three potentially good things and pick the one that gets you the furthest and makes the equity value of your company the highest right and so that process is is it sound it is it is quite for sure a high class problem and if you are undercapitalized don't have money don't have resources don't have the backing uh you know or cash in the bank to make those decisions staying alive starts trumping strategy right and, and making sure you pay the bills and don't fail starts trumping strategy and the hard part about that is is it by if you get further away from strategy you get further away from success and further away from high value so it is yeah and we were certainly money. in that book we we're certainly in the bucket of like under, like intentionally under resourced. Like we made coming from lane one where we had raised over twenty million dollars and like had a board of investors that had expectations. Like when I started seated, I intentionally wanted to raise less than a million dollars and do it more efficiently and do it based on revenue. And um, that was great when that was great. But then like when the pandemic comes and you are forced, you, you don't have the VC money to fall back on. Um, it's harder to stay focused. And so um, that's why we like adapted during the pandemic and we survived as a result. But um, yeah, I certainly wish I had the opportunity to uh, say no. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I, I think it's fascinating that you guys are both saying it coming from the sort of differences, right? Like mm -hmm. Ian comes through the program, raises the venture round, including capital from member companies, have very you have very little revenue even now, right? Like you have some. Um, you're not you're not at zero, right? But like for the no. most part, you're still making a prototype and proving that you can build a product. Yep. David, yep. you come through the program, growing your business with revenue. You get a little bit of capital from from some investors uh, in the network, right? But less than what? Like less than a million dollars total, right? We we never did get over a million dollars, right? Um, during the pandemic, we raised a half a million, but yeah, but prior to the pandemic, we, we had raised uh, around 900. Okay. So, I, so, so total, we were like one, four and grand in the grand scheme of things, right. All told, um, I forgot about the pandemic capital. We got sort of like a, a, a bridge financing inside there. Right. But for the most part, you were growing your business with revenue and, and the, so just very different paths from the program. I think it's very interesting to see you both come back to like, here's your one biggest learning, which is like, stay like grow the biggest thing, get to stick to strategy and, and say no to things that aren't in service of the biggest thing. Hard as hard as that as that is. So, um, very, very much appreciate you guys uh, sharing that. Um, can you hang out? Ian, I know you have a place you need to get to. Can you hang out for a minute? While we yeah, do audio? I can. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, Alex, uh, open Q and A time. Um, those are sort of the topics, uh, easy topics I wanted to cover at the top. Let's see what we have in the question queue. Yeah, let's dig into it. Um, this one I actually don't know Bob's answer for, but I know <laughs> I'd be interested to hear uh, uh, both Ian and David's ideas. Uh, if you were going to start a music tech company and launch it right now, what would you build? Uh. I mean, I don't have that luxury. I like a guy. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> very narrow focus. Right, have, I'm going to reload real quick so I can see if I can hear David. Cool. I, I think there's a big opportunity for um, 
what I would like to explore more is, and what we're doing with, with so far is exploring more with like the foundational artists earlier on in the careers and giving them uh, access to capital earlier on, which is very difficult. Like when I was managing a band, I managed a band called Ann Arbor. They were on Hopeless Records. I think we signed their life away for fifteen thousand dollars because they needed to buy a van. And like you know, we they have hundreds of millions of streams on Spotify across their songs, and they own none of their rights because fifteen years ago, fifteen thousand dollars was really attractive. And I think more and more artists are hanging on to their rights. Um, and they're only tempted to sell their rights away uh, because they need short-term access to capital. And so I don't have the product or the solution. I just have the problem. So that, that I'd, I'd want to explore that problem more. Ian, you're up. Yeah, I'm super long on fan-centric, um, like fan engagement, fan. So like, it also tangentially like applies to how I think about our virtual characters, which we hope to be like platforms for fans to contribute music to who otherwise would have a tough time getting their music out into the world. But I think it's the tip of the iceberg in terms of how, uh, how we've like so far utilized the way the internet's interconnected us to actually have fans have a, a stake say and involvement in, um, the artists that, that they help make successful, like often from a very early, um, a very like early point in those artists careers, and something like particularly with the pandemic, seeing the explosion of discord and sort of the visibility on all of these diehard communities around different artists. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, there's a lot of latent value, both like creative value and community value being created by these communities that isn't being captured um, or given back to the communities. So again, like this feels more like an opportunity than a particular tool or startup idea, but I think that as like community it sounds like the LV4 DAO is what it sounds like. Like, well, let's go. What's what's what are we waiting on? <laughs> yes, but I think it I think it applies to like human musicians too, right? Like as mm -hmm. as launching a Discord to have a place for your fans to interact becomes more quotidian. Um, I think the abilities for those communities to talk to one another and also just like build things themselves, they're going to need some tools for other people to build, and I'd love to be building those tools for for those communities to use, and then and then you know let them capture some of the value they create. I dig it. Cool. I dig it. You want me to answer, Alex, or do you want to go to the next? I'm kind of. I mean, like, I'll ask you afterwards. I'm curious. Yeah. No. <laughs> my, my answer is the same one. I want to. I want to invest in it. I don't want to have to build it. I want to invest in a game where the output is real music and real artists, and it's a casual mobile game you play on your phone while you're waiting for the bus, while you're in line at the grocery, while you're like blowing off time and you know between things. Something that I can have a daily active use case on where. Uh, where the output of the of the game is is artist careers, right? Um, my my the way I describe it is the Hunger Games, but for music and without the killing. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one's for David and Ian. Um, did you how did you diligence this program? I'm assuming this is coming from a founder. Um, did you talk to mentors? Did you talk to other founders? Uh, how did you figure out for yourself whether or not this was the real deal? I did both. Um, I was connected with some founders by Bob, though. God, I believe he stacked the deck, right? He's not going to send me founders <laughs> but I had anything, anything negative to say. But they, I mean, they, they were all very candid, um, as were the mentors. I knew a couple of the mentors separately. Um, uh, and then also just looking at the, I went to a demo day, right? Like that was a huge, a huge part of it was looking at the, um, looking at the previous portfolio companies was, was a massive, but like, trying to visualize putting myself in their shoes, I think was, was a key part of the village. You, you snuck into a demo day is what you did. <laughs> you didn't know, have a ticket? There's free beer. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but that was a huge part, especially for us, I think coming from, from an existing business rather than sort of already having a pitch deck and a, and a, and a, like a dream. Um, it was being like, could I sort of imagine this being what we were doing and that in combination with talking about the mentors and uh and founders was was huge and sort of just trying it on and seeing if it felt like it fit uh and yeah it did yeah david um sorry i'm trying did you poke around a little bit before oh, we right, right. so, so Al, um i called so i was a um 
I flew to LA and I, met, I went out to dinner with you, Bob. Uh -huh. And Bob like was a bit like, was, you know, you were doing a bit of convincing. I, I came in with that ego. I came in like, I don't need to give up 6% of my company to like meet a bunch of people I could already get introductions to. That was my attitude. And Bob convinced me it was more than that. And like, certainly right, especially being in LA, being around other founders, having them 250 mentors come into the office and meet with you personally, like have them scheduled for you, not cancel on you, like all those different things that happened so fast. Um, so so Bob, Bob sitting down with Bob and having you convince me to go through the, the process um, and be considered was the first step. And then when we got the offer to join, um, Bob, I called up Alex White, who had, I know didn't go through the Techstars music program, but he went through Techstars in Boulder. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I'm on the fence, man. Should I do this? Like, and he was like 100% yes um, and gave me all of his reasons. And so, yeah, it's important to diligence any investor. Um, and this is so much more than just an investor. Um, and they're, you know, been a true partner. I mean, we got acquired because of Texas. Like Jim came in to, as a mentor and we maintained that relationship for four years. And then four years later, he bought our company. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we, we did the, the diligence and I'm glad we chose to join the program. You have to do the diligence, right? Like it's a weird thing to say. And it sounds like I'm like a, some mental jujitsu thing. It, it, it isn't. We don't want anybody in the program who doesn't want to be in the program, period. Like if you can't look at us and go, oh, this, like our capital is expensive. Let me be very clear, right? Like we, we, you can, you can raise capital at better terms than our, than our capital. We're not interested in companies who need our money. We're interested in companies who want our help and can use our program to leverage into the next thing, right? So if you don't, if, we, if you can't see how we make you more valuable, and can't come to us and say, I need help with this and this and this, and here's what it looks like. And we can sit down and talk about how we're going to make this work. Then you shouldn't be in the program and please diligence, you know, us and ask questions and find out if, you know, you believe that we can do what we think we can do with you. And we are not always successful and we've made bad investments and we have been, we've thought that there are ways to help companies that didn't work. So like, we're not trying to do harm and we're not, we don't want anybody here who, who doesn't want to be here. Yeah, the next one was kind of written towards uh, Bob and I, but I think it can actually be turned into something for Ian and David. Um, because the, the question was, what kind of traction do companies have uh, before they come into Techstars? Um, and what are you looking for, Bob? But I think I'd turn it over to David and Ian, like kind of where were you at as a company when you were evaluating um, whether or not Techstars music would be of value for you? Like what kind of things have you accomplished? We've heard a lot about where you're at now. Anyone want to jump in? It it's funny because when we joined the program, we thought we were far, farther along than needing tech stars. And looking back, I'm like, my mind is blown because like we, we basically we had like a dozen clients and we had sold less than a million dollars in tickets. And of course, like we, we needed the help at the time. Um, but you know, we from a financial the, the metrics perspective, uh, you know, I think we had raised two or three hundred thousand dollars prior to joining we were a team of four um and yeah we had sold about a million dollars in tickets i would say probably um but yeah we've obviously grown a lot since then and because of the, the, the structure that techstars gave us yeah i think it might have been the first or second day i remember sitting with all the all the portfolio companies from my class and Bob pointing at us, me and my co-founder and one other group. And I think it might've been entertainment intelligence being like, wow, it's going to be a contest between the two of you, uh, whose revenue that you've made thus far is less relevant to the future. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think for us, it was, it was that huge similar, but I mean, even, even beyond just scaling, it was really finding out like what, what our product is because it wasn't creating visuals for artists on a gig by gig basis. Um, and so we had, we had traction, we, you know, had multiple years with over a um, million dollars in revenue and, and pretty solid year over year growth, but it wasn't um, focused or really um, like scaling in the way that we wanted to, to build out the team and like then build what we wanted to see in the world. It was incremental and uh, we were already reaching our choke points. So 
which, um, yeah, it's like a lot of the numbers. We invest in you despite your traction. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and probably, I, you know, also I think our early conversations were we were very candid about like me, if I, if I had had no qualms with the limitations on the traction we already had, Techstars wouldn't have been that attractive to me, right? Like part of it was me wanting to see the company grow and knowing, just looking at the numbers and knowing, yes, it's year over year growth, but it's not the kind of scalable growth. An agency model has all kinds of, um, especially like a creative agency in a, in a saturated competitive market. Um, so, so yeah, like it, the traction was not not in the area that we needed to really grow the way we wanted to. So the official answer here is that it's not required, but we have companies with millions of, of dollars in revenue and hundreds of thousands of users and zero dollars of revenue and zero users and occasionally zero product altogether. What we're, what we're after is the quality of your team. Do we believe that your team and this, uh, you know can solve a problem that is worth solving? And if you do succeed in solving it, we all you know, enjoy a venture scale outcome, right? That there's going to be, so the, my, my cheat sheet all the time is, do we believe that your company, if it's a consumer company, can be used by 100 million people? Can you have 100 million plus customers? If you're a B2B company, do we believe you could do $100 million in annual revenue? And the quality of your team, your advantages, right? Your your technical backgrounds, the, the prototype you've built, the maybe it's traction, maybe it's your, your previous successes, some combination of those factors convinces us to believe in your team. There are teams we believe in where the traction part of that equation is zero. And there are other teams we believe in where the traction part of that is really significant. So it's really about, do we believe your team can execute it more so than any one particular piece of weight on traction? It's not like a school application where you have to get a certain score on the test. Yep. Uh, if it's my job to land the plane on time, then it is, uh, I am two minutes late, but um, I really want to thank everybody. I'm going to stick around for a little bit and answer uh, via text some of those questions that are that are still there. But I want to thank Ian and David so much for their time. Thank you, Bob, for running through it. Thank you, everyone, for showing up and hanging out. Thank you to the members and the mentors. Thank you to an incredibly uh, engaged group of founders in here asking great questions and, and commenting. Um, a couple key dates here um, for everyone, but big call to action is apply if you're interested. And we're going to be back in two weeks, Alex. We're working on it. Um, right. I think our, our, our job here is to try to do this every other week. So we'll have a couple more of these. We'll have other founders on. Um, I know she's in the chat and, and probably not going to appreciate this, but we're definitely going to put Deja on the spot and bring Deja onto the call. This is your um, invitation, Deja. That's right. So coming, uh, if you're still hanging out, it's coming. You're, you're, you're drafted. Uh, you got to come to work. Um, we'll definitely uh, bring some member companies on the call and some other founders from the portfolio to talk about other issues. Um, we just wanted to kick it off, run through sort of the hybrid approach, remind everybody that, that applications are open. We have an open application process. Get them in there, right? Go to techstarsmusic.com for the details. If you are a mentor or a member or one of those lurking in the background investors, um, we are also taking referrals directly to us, right? So. If you know how to get a hold of, of Alex or I, it's not complicated, right? Our emails are publicly posted. Um, those referrals mean a lot to us and companies that are referred to us um, end up in the program at a higher rate than companies that just apply. So um, please, right? This is the moment in time where we are building our candidate pipeline. We wanna see all the cool stuff that people are building and working on. Um, all right, we should shut up. Gentlemen, thank you for, for coming and hanging out. Um, Alex, great job hosting. Um, I'm going to eventually work my way out of this and let you run this because you're so much better at it than I am. There, Deja just agreed. So you can see it in the chat. There it is. Okay, we've got confirmation. Uh, Deja's hired. Um, we'll see everybody uh, in two weeks. Thanks again. Bye, everyone. Thanks, y'all. See ya.